Okay, AP students, as promised, I told you I would walk you through how to do these three acid base equation problems. So the first one that I've got here is um, sulfuric acid, so HSO4 or H2SO4, reacting with strontium hydroxide. Now we're going to keep this simple. I know that H2SO4 has two hydrogens in it, but if you remember what I said earlier, only the ionization or the dissociation of the first hydrogen is um, a strong acid dissociation. So I'm, I'm going to keep this simple and just talk about that dissociation um, first or only. So we know that this is a strong acid and then this is a strong base. So um, we should just get a double replacement reaction. So on the other side, we're going to get hydrogen with hydroxide to produce water, which will be in its liquid form. And then we should get our strontium with our HSO4, and that should be aqueous. All right, so there's our complete molecular. Um, we should probably balance it by putting a 2 here. So there you go. Okay, complete ionic. Complete ionic is going to look like this. We're going to get um, H positive or a hydrogen ion plus an HSO4 minus ion plus strontium ion, sorry that's AQ, it's hard to read, plus two hydroxide ions. Sorry, I just realized that there should be a two here and a two there. Okay, so um, back to this. And then on the other side, we're going to get two liquid water molecules because that's our driving force, plus our strontium ions, plus our two HSO4 ions which are also aqueous. I'm going to just shrink this down so we don't have to squish. All right, and then our net ionic, or our overall equation, of course, um, you're going to cross out your spectators. So your spectators are the strontium and the um, hydrogen sulfides. Um, and our overall reaction is going to be our hydrogen. And there were two here, so we can go ahead and put the two plus our two hydroxides make two water molecules. Now, because everything's at a 2 to 2 ratio, really it's at a 1 to 1 ratio, so we can just change that to 1, 1, 1, and 1. Okay, so that's the first one. All right, there was the second equation. Now this, hopefully you realize that right here, we have a metal sulfide, and then we have a strong acid. So a metal sulfide plus a strong acid is going to still be a double replacement reaction. So on the other side, we're going to get a K with the I, so there's our salt, that will be aqueous. And then we're going to get H2S, or hydrogen sulfide gas, which is our driving force behind this reaction. So let's balance this equation so that we can account for the fact that we need two hydrogens and we end up or started with two potassiums. So there's our complete molecular. Our um, complete ionic, we'd have two potassium ions, so everything's going to ionize, and a sulfide ion, and two hydrogen ions, and two iodide ions, resulting in uh, two potassium ions plus two iodide ions, plus our H2S gas, which of course is our driving force. So if we cross out spectators, the potassium and the iodide are our spectator ions. So our final net ionic equation will be sulfide ion plus our two hydrogen ions becoming or yielding H2S 
gas. All right, so that's an acid gas reaction because we're producing a gas. Okay, and then in the third reaction, we have uh, potassium carbonate reacting with HClO3 or chloric acid, chlorous acid. I can't remember. Anyway, um, on this one, I told you that you didn't need to do complete ionic, net ionic, all of that. You can just do an overall reaction. So this reaction is essentially going to result in the following three things. You're going to end up with KClO3, um, and you're going to end up with water. So that's a liquid, and this is aqueous and you're going to end up with carbon dioxide gas. So that's the three products. Of course, um, we would need to balance this equation by putting a 2 here because we have two potassiums that we need to deal with and a and a 2 here and a two here. I believe that makes that a balanced equation.